Hi everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this Arctic Accelero Hybrid 7970. This is an aftermarket closed loop liquid cooling solution for video cards. We'll start off with a closer look at the box as well as a brief history lesson. If you look at the history of cooling computer components, well computer components get hot and air has been used primarily for a lot of the time that computers have existed to help keep them cool. Liquid cooling has proven to be a very effective solution, however liquid cooling uh, solutions can be a bit more difficult to set up and a bit more difficult to get into, especially if you're just getting into it as a beginner. Closed loop liquid cooling solutions have become very popular for CPUs and they're often quite effective. They don't require any maintenance and Arctic decided, well, why don't we go ahead and make those for video cards. So this one is the 7970 edition of the Accelero Hybrid, which as the name implies, is designed primarily for use with AMD 7000 and 6000 series video cards. Actually, the list is down here on the very bottom. I'm going to start there just so you guys know what it will work with. So the AMD Radeon HD 7970, 7950, 7870, 7850, 6970, as well as all the other numbers right there, which I'm not going to read off entirely. Above that, we have some uh, cooling performance comparisons. These are directly from, Ar from Arctic uh, regarding the temperature that your uh, video card is going to run at. Under load, of course, lower temperatures are better, so 58C versus 88, 86C right there. Uh, noise level uh, measured in the zones, and uh, that graph right there clearly indicates much fewer zones for this uh, cooler than the uh, reference cooler. Also, RAM and uh, power delivery cooling performance with the thermal adhesive that's included, which you can apply to your RAM as well as your VRMs. And that will, again, keep those cooler, which uh, is really helpful for overclocking performance in general. If you'd like a quick little diagram of how this guy works, it's over here. And uh, pretty simple. you got the uh, liquid that is warmed up by transferring heat from the GPU right here, travels into the radiator, fan cools it off, travels out as cool liquid back into here where it gets warmed up by the GPU again. A little bit more info on the other side of the box here. So here are all the detailed specs if you guys want to take a look. They're all listed right there. I'm not going to read them all off, but you can pause and read them if you want to. Uh, but also over here on the right side, there's actually a few examples of configurations where you might set this up. So you could actually do intake in the back of your computer and exhaust at the top. I can do a more uh, standard uh, airflow configuration with the air coming in the front, going through your CPU and then out the back. Uh, so, some few, a few options right there, just some ideas for you folks who might be interested in integrating one of these into your system. Here's a look at the contents of the retail box, guys. Uh, first off, in this uh, shroud of plastic where the shroud was, uh, you have a variety of aluminum small heat sinks, and those are to apply uh, to the memory modules as well as uh, voltage regulation modules, power modules on the video card itself. Let um, me set that aside for now. The instructions, which are right over here, are very detailed. Uh, they have pretty easy to understand diagrams for the assembly process because they're sort of designing this to work with a variety of different uh, video cards. So they've given you layout of the card and said depending on where your power connector is, you might route the cable one way or another. But just to make sure that you're accommodated and you can, you can get everything plugged in appropriately. Also over here is that full list of accessories. Uh, for instance, bear in mind that there is thermal glue and thermal paste, and uh, you should not get those mixed up. The thermal glue is more uh, permanent. That's in this little packet right there. Thermal paste is right there, and that's actually to apply uh, between the uh, copper block and the GPU itself. Uh, you have an assortment of screws here for uh, attaching the shroud to the uh, cooler and uh, also various assembly uh, procedures. Right here you have a uh, little... Uh, card and that's pretty much a layout for this bracket so you can make sure that you're lining up the holes appropriately. Uh, you have an extra PCI bracket for the back of your case so uh, if you for instance need to remove that bracket you can replace that and it's got some ventilation holes as well. Uh, you also have insulation tape and that's for a particular part of the video card and I actually have already disassembled the video card here. I'm going to do a quick demo of the installation but <clears throat> as you can see there's already some thermal tape right there and that's simply to provide some extra heat transference for some very small components that also get very hot and definitely want to make sure you install that. Here's the shroud that goes over the actual video card and uh, here at the back there's uh, set up so you can actually put the block on right there and secure it in place. Here's that little uh, lead that you can plug directly into the video card and that way the video card can uh, regulate your fan speeds. Now there's some channels right here where you route the actual tubes for the water cooling unit. 
Uh, that's about it for this. We'll get into a little bit more as I do the demo. Here's the water cooling unit itself. So as you can see, it's an enclosed water loop. Uh, there's some cabling coming off here, so you can plug this in and provide power to the pump. Uh, at the base, as you can see, you have a nice uh, copper block, and that's going to provide direct contact with the GPU. And since they're making this for a more specific GPU, they were actually able to fashion that in such a way that you really get direct contact only on the GPU itself. And then here is your actual radiator right there. Pretty standard uh, closed loop radiator, if you guys are familiar with those. And then finally, of course, you get a 120 millimeter fan from Arctic. It's got white fan blades, and you can attach that, depending on the configuration, to either side of this radiator, whether you're doing a push or a pull. And uh, again, all those different configurations are referenced on the box as well as in the manual. I'm going to do a brief uh, installation walkthrough. Uh, we're using a reference AMD 7950 video card right here, and uh, this, again, strictly reference board, so this should be the same situation you look at for most 7950 and 7970 applications. First part is to remove the stock heat sink, uh, which is right here on my right. Note that there are lots of little screws for that. You make sh want to make sure you do not lose those. There's also this little uh, four-corner retention bracket, which actually sits at the back of the video card, and that uh, holds the actual block for the uh, stock heat sink up against the GPU, so you want to remove that as well. And then you're simply going to loosen the stock heat sink fan from there, so give it a little wiggle. Remember, there are a couple extra screws at the back here on the bracket itself as well, so make sure you remove those. Uh, once you've removed all the screws, you should be able to just gently ease this away from the card and it'll pop off once the uh, thermal grease right there releases because that tends to get a little bit sticky on there. If you're having a really tough time, you can actually uh, install the card and warm it up a little bit. That could actually loosen up that thermal paste and uh, give you a little bit of an easier time removing that. Now, uh, as we're looking at it here, you'll note that there are a few things. There are pads, thermal pads, that are installed on all of these uh, memory modules. You're going to want to remove those, and then the instructions actually recommend using an eraser to remove any uh, residue that's still on those, and then that will allow you to use the included aluminum heat sinks, like those, and uh, use that included glue to install those, and that'll help keep your memory cooler. Also, again, uh, pay close attention to where these little thermal strips are right here. Uh, there's some voltage regulation modules on there that you need to keep cool. Generally, if you see capacitors and chokes right here, there's going to be some of those right next to them. So you'll notice there's a strip of them right here. And then also down here on this end of the card, there's a couple more right there. So make sure you keep this, these uh, thermal strips, insulation tape handy and pay attention to where those are. I'm using some of my thermal material remover right here to clean off the GPU itself. Uh, make sure you get all of this thermal material removed because in some cases it can be conductive and you definitely don't want it on any of the actual transistors on the board. So I'm going to take a minute and make sure to get this nice and clean. So I got the GPU all cleaned off and uh, if you guys don't have that thermal material remover stuff that I have, you can use uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, I like to use uh, coffee filters because they're disposable and they work pretty good. Uh, now bear in mind for this uh, installation demo, I'm actually not going to be installing the heat sinks on the RAM here or the thermal strips uh, on the VRMs uh, just because I know I'm not going to keep this on here permanently. But I'm going to be following the instructions for the next few steps. So the next step is to take some of these little rubber standoffs and simply apply them down here at the base where the, uh, where the water block is going to go. Next up, based on the location of the power connector for the fan on the video card, I've routed this cable out through the back of the shroud. Uh, with that in place, I'm going to go ahead and drop in the actual water block, as well as the tubes, which we want to route around like so. Drop it into place, and then there are four screws that will uh, hold the water block to the shroud. Just like that. Next up to hold the tubing in place, we have a couple smaller screws with a very wide washer, and that will just keep these from popping out of position. Next up, we're taking the power plug from the uh, pump, and we're plugging it in to the 4-pin header that's right here in the shroud. Next up, you'll be using this paper guide. Uh, essentially, you're going to line it up on the video card itself that you're replacing the heatsink fan for. Line up the holes to determine which you're going to use. Incidentally, for this one, I'm going to be using all of the inner holes. Uh, and at this point, you have a couple things that you're going to want to do. One is you're going to use that same guide uh, in correspondence with the holes on the actual water block. And you're going to be using some adhesive pads 
and some standoffs. And bear in mind, there's a couple different sizes of these. So you got 3.5, uh, which are the black ones here. You got 4 millimeter, which are the white ones. I'm going to be using the 4 millimeter according to the instructions here. I'll be using the adhesives to mount four of these right there, and um, I'm not going to go through all that right now. And then aside from that, uh, what you are also supposed to do is to use this paper guide right here, and at this point is when you're going to want to install the uh, little aluminum heat sinks on your memory as well as on your uh, voltage regulation modules wherever necessary. So you leave this guide on right here, and that will sort of give you an indication of how much space you have around the GPU itself. And then, uh, I, again, I'm not going to be doing it for this uh, installation demo, but you would want to clean off all of your memory modules here and then use that thermal glue to uh, adhere the aluminum heat sinks to all of those. My spacer is secured here by the adhesive, and uh, assuming, of course, that I've installed all of my uh, aluminum heat sinks, I can go ahead and move on with the uh, installation. Oh, I should remember to take the uh, cable that I fed over here and plug it in to provide power and control for the fan like so. And uh, then we're going to, of course, apply a thermal paste. So if you're familiar with uh, CPUs, it's pretty much the same concept. Bear in mind that this is an exposed GPU right there. That's probably more than enough thermal paste, although the instructions tell you to use all of it, but I think all of it would be a bit too much. Uh, but bear in mind that the GPU there itself has about the uh, durability of glass, so you definitely don't want to put any pressure, especially on the corners of that, because it can break. Next up, I'm going to just simply flip this over and set it on top of the copper block, and that should spread out the thermal paste. I'm going to line it up with those spacers that I have already pre-installed. The thermal paste will start to spread out a bit as I put a little bit of pressure. And then from here, we can install the back plate, and there's a couple different steps to that. Hopefully this will stay in place while I go through with this. First off, we have a bit of foam padding, and that's simply to protect the uh, delicate components on the underside of the video card. So I'm going to put that right there in the center. Next up we have the uh, 3.5 millimeter spacers that I showed you earlier. These actually have adhesive as well, which I think you can use, although the instructions don't specifically stay that. So I'm going to try to line this up without those, and we'll just see how things go. You never know. And then uh, finally we have our retention plate for the back. Uh, bear in mind the side that has a little bit of a uh, rougher look than the chrome on this side is the side that you want to face towards the GPU. And then from here we're going to bolt this down. Now bear in mind that it, this is going to need a bit of pressure on it, which is why there are longer screws, which we're going to simply feed straight down through here. And once I get all these fed through there, then I should be able to start tightening these down. I'm going to go on a cross pattern so I don't put any pressure on one side or the other of the GPU prematurely. And then just sort of ease it on by tightening each corner down a little bit at a time, moving around in an X pattern. All right, so all my screws are threaded now and I'm just going to move and give a couple turns on each side, moving from corner to corner. And that pretty much does it for our walkthrough of the installation. I pretty much wanted to get this installed in here so you guys could take a look at how it works. So now at the back we have our tubing coming off and here's our radiator. So we would simply be attaching the fan to that depending on the configuration we're going with in our case. The four pin uh, connector for that fan routes over and plugs in to this four pin connector at the back of the shroud and then everything is powered. Finally you do have a single Molex plug coming out that you can route over to your power supply. And uh, just looking at the actual cooler itself installed, we have the single fan right here and that's going to be directing air straight down at what is primarily your voltage regulation modules right in there. So you can see we have nice uh, good contacts uh, from the uh, cooler and the uh, water block on the GPU itself and it's secured on the back with that universal back plate. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Arctic Accelero Hybrid 7970, the aftermarket closed-loop water cooler designed for AMD 7000 series video cards, seen here installed on an AMD Radeon HD 7950. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.